A fact, especially when somebody want to be the guy so bad. Like I've been around some Q QB rooms, bro. Like they mm -hmm. can't wait for you to lose. They can't wait to see you. Wait to see you take that L, bro. Like nice. can't wait to see you see you down and see you fall. You feel me? Mm -hmm. like, I've been around. Them. I've been around. I've been around nice. some guys, but I never set up to them guys. I just seen. I just seen little flashes of it. Like mm -hmm. you feel me? Like keep asking me questions. Not even about foot. I mean about football, but like, are you good, bro? Like it's just like weird questions. Like dang, mm -hmm. you were asking me that, bro? Like. You think you want me to come back so they can get in the game, stuff like that, bro? Like, mm -hmm. you know I mean? I've been around it all, bro. Right. They try to ask about your future before you, you know? even know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, mm -hmm. you, we can relate, bro. That's what yeah. I'm about. This is a good little interview, bro. You can, we can relate mm -hmm. to each other, bro, for sure. What's up, everybody? Here with Art the Field with Isaiah Robinson. Got a special one for you guys today. Special guest, Carlos Davis, quarterback from Baltimore, Maryland, who now just transfers to Towson University. Yes, How you sir. doing today, bro? I'm good, bro. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So let's get into it. Where everybody want to know why you left UMass to go to Towson. Um just wanted to come back home, closer to home, bro. Mm. Um, actually, that was supposed to be my last year to play. Mm. But I had got injured. And it was like, God, give me a sign. Like, bro, just, just try it out again somewhere else. You feel me? So mm. got my year back, a medical red shirt. And I'm like, shoot, I'm just trying to go home. Because my mom, Duke's never seen me play in college before. She's won the one game. So mm. why not? Mm. So you got injured last year? Or when did you get injured? I got injured last year, week four. Oh, wow. At um, college ribs mm. how long did that take you off for, for the rest of the, like um so that? actually i suppose it came back probably week 10 mm -hmm. around, that, around that time but like it was no point in me coming back bro i'm just like i mm -hmm. played what three games i'm like i'm not ready to risk it bro like and not get hurt again i even think about that i'm thinking long term you feel mm -hmm. me so i'm like shoot why not get in a whole nother year back to refresh restart and go do it again Mm, like that. So how do you see this impacting your career moving forward going to Towson? Um I see it as another year of an, another opportunity. More mm. more more games under my belt. You feel me to get me prepared for whatever's next. So I don't mm. know what's next. So I'm just trying to keep adding on to my resume. Mm. All right, all right. So you said you came back home to see your mom play. And I know you're gonna have a lot of other fans going to watch that in the hometown too. So what does it mean to play in your hometown now? Oh, it means a lot, bro. It means like all my friends that never seen me play before since high school mm. can come see me play. My family, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, niece, nephews, everybody can get to see me play. And I'm like, it's gonna be a a warm welcome home the mm. first game. So can't wait for that. All right. So people may not realize, but you are always a D one quarterback. So talk to me about your journey and the different schools you went to. You went to two different JUCOs. So yeah. talk to me about your journey. Man, my journey is a long one, bro. Very long journey. So first off, I went out Fort Scott, Kansas, 2018. Mm -hmm. Actually registered there. Then I played my second year. So then before COVID came that January 2020, we had got a new – my coach that recruited me at Fort Scott got fired. Mm. And it was like whole new staff. So it was like boom, I'm gonna try it out, see how it is. You find just gonna lead these guys. Mm -hmm. So then COVID happened, we got sent home. I'm like, shoot. My boy Kyrie hit me up, like, yo, my coach is looking at you at East Mississippi. So I'm like, mm. shoot, why not? Went mm -hmm. down there, we didn't play though. So it was COVID, so all the season was canceled. Boom. Got some film out, got a few offers. Then I got to Western Carolina. They took a chance on me. So I'm like, boom, I'm gonna hit there. Mm -hmm. No visit, no nothing. You feel mm -hmm. me? So straight Dang. off, just straight <laughs> off, DMing the teammates. You know how they DMing teammates. Yeah. How it is there, blah, blah, blah. Chopping mm -hmm. up with them. Went to Western Carolina. Played two and a half. I was there for two and a half years. So we played that spring. Then then we played that fall. Then I played the next year with them guys. Then I graduated. And I'm like, shoot, I'm right. Go, I want to play FBS ball now. I want to see how it is at the top level now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, at UMass. So that's a little bit more my, my journey. Mm -hmm. So what has it taught you and what, what have you learned from it? Um I've learned a lot, bro. 
I've learned that the grass ain't green and always on the other side. The grass not not green on the other side sometimes. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. it's not, but like with me, I like to take a risk. Mm -hmm. I take the risk. I don't care about the grass, none of that, the color on the other side, none of that, bro. I take right. the risk, so shoot. Better than yourself. Yeah, better than myself for sure, all the time. Boy. So what did you have to do in the college moment? On the field or off the field, or just either or? Both. First of all. All right, so off the field, going to Juco, bro. 18 mm -hmm. hours away from home. That's my walk on the college. Like, bro, yeah. everybody on their own, you feel me? Like, we drink mm -hmm. kind of lowest of the low. So it was, like, tough, a struggle for some people. Some people mm -hmm. not, may not be struggle, but, like, I've seen it all, bro. I've seen guys come from Division One level FBS, come to Juco. Mm -hmm. And which say at FBS, you get everything handed to you, kind of like money and everything, make sure you're good. Mm -hmm. To like you at zero now, Brody. Like everybody on the same level, you feel me? So that was mm -hmm. like a welcome, like everybody. You feel me? You got to grind it out. These are guys for real. And I met a lot of guys from JUCO. That's like my close friends now. Mm -hmm. But on the field, let me see a moment up. What when college football? Um, probably this past year, bro. Like mm -hmm. the senior, I seen both sides now: FBS, FCS level, and JUCO. So I'm me seeing like how fast them guys are and like they really up there mm -hmm. like trying to get paid. Mm. I'm on the same type of timing, but like I'm new to that level. So mm -hmm. like let me get comfortable, but like definitely playing against like the Auburns and all that other stuff, like playing against the power five schools, you're definitely going mm -hmm. meet your match, you feel me? Yeah. So it was just that was a good experience though, bro. I had fun playing against the big schools. Right. And I was about to say, like, what's the biggest difference you've seen between all those levels, JUCO, D1? Like what's the biggest difference? Um, Juco guys, they just like there's a lot of dogs on the field. Mm. Feel me? Like there's mm -hmm. always gonna be one fish or a couple of fishes in a you feel me in certain teams, but like some teams yeah. are all dogs, like everybody dogged up. Everybody mm -hmm. like they just not put together well yet because they in Juco. So when they go to the FBS school, they get put together and get the right technique, right? You feel me? Film, mm -hmm. study, all that. That's how they program and everything. You feel me? Everybody growing at one point. So, but mm -hmm. like FBS is the trenches, bro. Gotta mm -hmm. be the trenches. Mm -hmm. FCS more slower. Like it's some guys. You got a few guys in the trenches, some other places, but they don't be like all four. But like FBS, they put their best four out there, their best five O line, whatever. Mm -hmm. the trenches, it makes a difference. But skill, it can match up anywhere, bro. FCS mm -hmm. guys, FBS guys, D two guys, go out there and play on the FCS level, FBS level, whatever. Right. Trenches, big difference. All right. So as a quarterback, leadership is crucial. It's like what we do. Yeah. So how did you establish yourself as a leader in a new team, especially coming in as a transfer? Um, Just building relationships, bro. Mm. Off the field, not even doing no football stuff, just meeting up with the guys, topping it up with them, chilling with them most most definitely. Just like making them get to know me, making them more comfortable around me because they, trust me at the end of the day, I trust them guys on Saturdays, you feel me? Right. So like, that's how I really build my relationships with the guys and build all that stuff up. Becoming in, coming in as a transfer because it's big. Not coming mm -hmm. in with them as start a freshman and like getting to know them. Like, okay, what's up, bro? Didn't know him for three years. I got one year left, bro. Right. Like, you feel me? So like, that's how I build my relationships. Just chilling with the guys and just hanging out. So it's not oh, about shit. what you know. It's about who you know, right? For sure. So within the relationships and being a quarterback, especially just being. Just being a quarterback and you just yeah. run in. Now you got like five other people in that room. Like, let's talk about that. Like, is there hating towards each other? Is this like, is it all um, like they always bring you in or how is it? Different places, bro. Different mm. places. So, like, coming into Western Carolina, it was me and another quarterback they brought, brought, brought both, both, both of us in. So it was like, we good, we cool. We don't mm -hmm. know each other yet, but like we both trying to win a job. We both got money to make. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it was different, bro. It was, mm -hmm. it was different. I ain't lying. Mm -hmm. So then they bought, so my coach staff got fired that recruited me at Western Carolina, but they kept a, the new coaches kept a few guys, and I was one of the guys they kept. Mm -hmm. But we already had a they already had it established. They bringing a guy in mm -hmm. respect level. I got two years left. He know the offense. I'm right behind, bro. I cheer, bro, on every day, bro. Mm -hmm. Every day, all day. Mm. This past season, same thing. I lost a job. He won a job. He in. I'm cheering, bro, on every practice, bro. You feel mm. me? Getting other better. I ain't, ain't no hating me, bro. I don't mm -hmm. know how these other guys, though, from the other perspective. When I was in, I didn't know how guys was. was. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It was the same energy. I don't know. 
But right. I, I know when I was when I wasn't the guy or I am the guy, I'm the same person, bro. Mm-hmm. Everybody can vouch for that. Mm-hmm. I'm a good team, good teammate. You feel me? At the end right. of the day, that's that's what it was. How how I am, mm. how I, how I take things, how I how I um carry business. Right. And it's crazy you said different places because it really depends. On, like the quarterback room was like that. Sh- that should yeah, be, be different. No facts, especially when somebody yeah. want to be the guy so bad. Like I've been around some Q- QB rooms, bro. Like they can't mm-hmm. wait for you to lose. They can't wait to see you. Wait to see you take that L, bro. Like nice. can't wait to see you see you down and see you fall. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, I've been around. Them. I've been around. I've been nice. around some guys, but I never set up to them guys. I just seen. I just seen little flashes of it. Like mm-hmm. you feel me? Like keep asking me questions. Not even about football. I mean about football, but like, are you good, bro? Like it's just like weird questions. Like dang, mm-hmm. you were asking me that, bro? Like. You think you want to be able to come back so they can get in the game, stuff like that, bro? Like, mm-hmm. you know I mean? I've been around it all, bro. Right. They try to ask about your future before you, you even know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You, mm-hmm. We can relate, bro. That's about yeah. about it's a good little interview, bro. You can, we can mm-hmm. relate to each other, bro, for sure. Right. And the thing with that, though, is like dealing with that and then dealing with also the best quarterback on the team doesn't always start. Yeah. So, how do you manage that at all mentally? Like, what do you do to wind yourself down, or what do you do to push through all the tough roads in your journey? Um, my biggest is just staying ready, bro. Mm. I just stay ready, so I ain't gotta get ready, bro. That's mm. what I really carry. That's what that's one of the um quotes I carry a lot around where I go at anywhere. Because mm-hmm. I know, like, like you said, the best guy don't always play. And mm-hmm. I've been there a few times, bro. You feel me? So yeah. I just stay ready so I gotta get ready, bro. Cause I know, mm-hmm. I know God got me. God gonna show me, you feel me, gonna put me in that position where I wanna be one of these games. And I ain't wishing no nobody downfall. I ain't wishing nobody no injury, none of that. But like I'm gonna get my shot for sure. Mm-hmm. Every time everywhere I've been at, when I wasn't the guy or wasn't the starter at first, I get my shot and it shows like you feel me? So, mm-hmm. so how do you think this variety of experiences from going to different schools has influenced your skills and mindset as a quarterback and as a person? Um, just seeing, just being around different different energy, different coaches, different styles of offense, bro. I learned probably like six offenses, bro, my whole mm-hmm. college career. So like. Expanding Slide. my knowledge for the game, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm getting better and better. I'm a film junkie. Um, I just love being around football, bro. And it makes me like at first I didn't like like I didn't do all the film studying and everything because I wasn't the guy before, but like now, bro, I'll be on it, bro, like every day, especially like during season, even off the season. At I mean off season, I be mm-hmm. on it, bro. So being around a bunch of different schools and different people and different like kind of energy mm-hmm. um helped me grow. Mm-hmm. To the football in the football world, bro. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it gives you like advantages when you come in as a transfer going to Towson. Now, yeah, you put in a whole different level because you already been through six offenses. Yeah, so now you helping the coach install the plays, and now you, you feel me? Coach, don't like now, I'm, now I'm the second coach on the field. Mm-hmm. But even though I, I I've been trying to be that for like my last schools, but, like, definitely the coaches can even say that. I can try to be a second coach and, like, hey, this play work, this play, blah, blah, blah. I like this play. You feel me? I need to feel more comfortable with you on the field. Mm-hmm. It's all about trust at the end of the day, bro. Right. Like, the position we play, mm-hmm. they got to trust you. Got to. Because that's where they money get made at. You feel me? They got, they got family to feed, too. You mm-hmm. feel me? So. Facts. So you had the opportunity to face different opponents and play it against your friends, too. So, are there any standout games or moments that you had lasting impact as you as a player? Like, man, I'm never going to forget this game. Um, never going to forget a game. What game did I play against my friends? Mm-hmm. I barely played against my friends, bro. Really? Yeah. Maybe this season coming out, I got a memorable game. Where's mm-hmm. Morgan State? I'm going to play against them guys. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to be you feel me, my friend on that team, one of my bro- closest brothers on that team, play defense. So it's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good one for sure. Okay, okay. You want to shout that game out towards your friends, the fans, She's watching this interview? Um, September seventh, we play Morgan State for the Battle of Baltimore, I believe. So hopefully, a lot of guys come out and come watch the show. Mm-hmm. 
Are you ready? Now we get into the trivia part of this uh, interview. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. How many NFL divisions are there? Eight, five, seven, or six? It's eight divisions. Mm -hmm. Who won the first Super Bowl? Oh, that's tough. Um, The first Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You want me to give you uh, choices? Yeah, give me choices. All right. Carolina Panthers, Green Bay Pack, uh, Packers, uh, Chicago Bears, and Atlanta Falcons. I think I'm gonna go with. I think I'm gonna take my educated guess with the Packers. Yeah, you got the Packers. Yeah. <laughs> Packers hit that day. Which two team has the most Super Bowl win? Steelers. Super mm hmm Super Bowl win. You got two of them, all right? I'm gonna give you five. I'm gonna give you five guesses. And two. All right. You got the Steelers, you got the Packers, you got 49ers, you got the Patriots, and you got the Jaguar. I think I'm gonna go. Um, you said I'm, 49ers for sure. One of them teams. I said 49ers. 49ers in the. Ah, uh, can I go? New England just start winning that joint though. Mm -hmm. Probably I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Packers. Ah, it was Steelers and Patriots. Steelers and Patriots. Oh Steelers man, and, and Tom. You know Tom had that run. Yeah, Tom did had a run for sure. Yeah. All right, which four teams are named after cats? Panthers. Mm -hmm. Um, after cats, Carolina Panthers, Detroit Lions. Mm -hmm. Um, Detroit Lions, Carolina Panthers. Shoot. Uh, what am I think down south. Down south. Mm. I'm really lost. It's got me lost. I gotta really do my thinking. You got the Jaguars? Jaguars, you're right. I'm tripping. Jaguars and the Bengals. And the Bengals, okay. Now I'll get back to the interview. So your sister, Mia Davis, is also a standout out division one basketball player who also made it to the WNBA. So how has her success influenced and motivated your own athletic career? Um, influenced me a lot, bro. Just mm -hmm. you growing up in the same room, same same little bunk bed. You feel me? So, I seeing her, seeing her grind, bro, and seeing her put that work in, bro, made me want to do the ten, do it ten times. You feel mm -hmm. me? So like, I'm like, why not? As my mm -hmm. big sister. So like, growing up, it was always you, me, a little brother. Hmm. So I need my own name. You feel me? I want my own name. Like you know me for Carlos now. You know me for Ben. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Me a brother type stuff. So seeing her do all, everything in college, bro, from from starting off middle school basketball, mm -hmm. high school, college, bro. Now she overseas in France now. Mm -hmm. Now she's just like, bro, it's amazing watching her journey, bro. Like I'm definitely a proud brother. You feel mm -hmm. me? So and I seen it all from day one. Mm -hmm. Day one, like from zero to where she at now, bro. Mm -hmm. So means a lot. So what are some things you learned from watching her and you incorporated it to yourself? Um, Stay down till you come up. Mm. Learned that from her. She stayed down for sure. Like, mm. made the best of whatever opportunity she was given. Mm. Made the best of it. So that's what I do now. So I do the same stuff. So sibling rivalry can also be a great motivator. So how has your friendly competition with your sister pushed you both to achieve success in your respective <laughs> sports? Y'all ever um, have any fights? I mean, I'm better at this than you. Um, yeah, always. Always a debate with us. Um, always seeing who better. I never I stayed in my lane though. Never got in that basketball lane with her because I know <laughs> I know what happened. So yeah. shoot. <laughs> like one time she won, um, we had a little debate, a little little competition. She won a little Fox 45 player of the week. Mm. And I motivate myself to win that also. Like, mm -hmm. I bet I get that. You got it. I'm going to get it. So, the crazy part is, she won it in January. I won it in November. That was, and that. was like mm -hmm. some little stuff. That was cool for sure. Mm -hmm. So, how do you support each other's athletic endeavors? Have you, you go to all her games? Um, um, how do you ask so, support each other? So, she's a, so she a year older than me. I mean, mm -hmm. not a year. She's a month older than me, but like in college, I, I played more. More seasons in college, so like when she was mm. in college, I'd be having, I'd be in school, I'd mm. be far away. Like she was in Temple, I was in North Carolina or mm. Machuco, but like I watch every game. 
mm -hmm. even to now. Mm -hmm. When I when I'm home, oh yeah, my breaks and stuff, I definitely go up to went, went up to Philly, went to wherever she was at and watched her play. I haven't been mm -hmm. on France yet, but like definitely been to every game, watch every game. Big That's supporter, bro. All the videos. She come, she come back to her phone. I'm flooding her messages mm -hmm. from her Instagram, posting her and stuff, bro. Biggest fan ever, bro. Right. I love that. Is that when you go to France to visit her? That's gonna be a good one right there. Good one, definitely. <laughs> Any advice you have for aspiring college quarterbacks who are looking to make it? Um, just stay down, bro. I mm. say, I say, just stay down. Mm. Keep your head down, grind, bro. You feel me? You look up, you gonna see the light. Mm -hmm. One day, you keep, keep, keep moving forward and just keep, just keep getting better, bro. Mm. Perfecting your craft every day. You feel me? Little things, little things, bro. Hit mm. movements, stuff like that. I didn't know five years ago. Mm -hmm. Everything, all that, bro. So stay down. Stay down mm -hmm. till you come up and better on yourself. Right. All, all, always better on yourself. Always. Love it. Love it. Finally, tell us about your favorite. We're coming back to it now. Hopefully, you got it in your head. Tell us about your favorite football memory so far. Is there any game that you could think of now? Um, favorite favorite game, favorite game, favorite game probably was last year, twenty twenty two, Western Carolina versus Charleston Southern. My first start, first like me being the guy, mm -hmm. me being the guy. My first um start, I went out there and cooked, bro. Mm. But it was, I what I had like four hundred twenty something passing yards, six touchdowns, broke the records. Whew. So it was definitely a good, good experience, bro. Me. Mm -hmm. Me leading the ship now and like me coming out like oh, they probably don't know how I'm gonna be. You feel me? You know how mm -hmm. coaches is first year guy, but they seen me play before last year. So like I was in the game when the guy got injured, but like I mm -hmm. wasn't the guy though. Mm -hmm. So definitely running it all back in the same mm -hmm. little area. So my first start, 2021, when my guy got injured, my guy Rogan. Shout mm -hmm. out to Rogan. He um got injured. I came and we played in South Carolina against the Citadel. Mm -hmm. We was Owen. What was our record, bro? Owen seven, something like that. We losing close games. Oh, wow. Our first start, we win. Oh, wow. Four hundred yards that game. I think I had three touchdowns, four touchdowns. I had four hundred yards again. So mm. like coming back to South Carolina and playing in that same little area we was in, like mm -hmm. it's a different squad. And I'm running it back with four hundred, four hundred again. It was mm. definitely a great feeling, bro. Mm. Love that. So you mentioned something important, like. When you was on a team from zero and seven, and you've been on some winning teams. So, yeah, what's the differences between seeing between a winning team and a losing team that you see? Um, always the extra, bro. Who putting yeah. the extra in? And like, what guys is the team is coming together? Because my winning team I was on, mm -hmm. we practicing on we practicing on Saturdays when we don't like not post to, but like when, we, when everybody chilling, everybody off days. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Practicing like we me. And the defensive captain bring the guys up on the field. Hey, we're gonna do y'all work on y'all stuff. We're on this stuff. Then we do a little seven on seven after. Get better. Just like get each other better. Cause like um, my coach, my coach K, my mm -hmm. old coach K Bell, he was big on like the LSU 2019 team with Joe Burrow and them. And said them mm -hmm. guys on Saturdays getting the extra in. And look what they want. They want the extra championship. Mm -hmm. Like we brought a winning a winning season to Western Carolina program like they never like seen before. Like they seen it before, but like not in years. So like mm -hmm. us practicing and like us gelling together and us becoming one team mm. definitely was big, bro. Mm. And I think in certain places we didn't do that. Right. Like it, it, the results showed, you feel me? Mm -hmm. You can't trust the guy. You can't, you can't trust this guy. They can't trust me. Trust whoever. You feel mm. what I'm saying? So like it was big on like putting the extra work in, everybody watching film together, everybody trying to accomplish one goal. That's the mm. win. So yeah. now we get into the hot seat interview questions. You ready for that? For sure. Mm -hmm. Have you ever sent out a risky text to the wrong person? No. no. Who's your celebrity crush? Celebrity crush, probably um Megan Good. Megan Good, okay, that's a good one. Craziest thing you did to impress a girl? Crazy thing I did to impress a girl? Mm -hmm. Um, crazy thing I did to impress a girl. What you call it crazy? Uh, one guy, he uh, put stilts in his shoes to make himself seem taller when he wanted to. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's crazy. Like that. 
<laughs> no, I never never did nothing crazy, bro, to impress nobody. You either gonna like me or you don't. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who do you think has more ballers, DMV or B more? <laughs> In That's... terms of basketball and air football. Um <laughs> You know I'm gonna rock off for Baltimore, bro. Nah, I think he's gonna give you that. I'm, 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 because DMV is a whole. That's that's DC, Maryland, but just that's, two, that's yeah. three different joints against one. That is. But I can't say I, I say Baltimore, bro. I say mm-hmm. Baltimore because basketball, like best player to come out of the back. Like you can say like draft picking all. I'm talking about like they got the world on the world attention. Mm-hmm. High school phenom, a kill card come from Baltimore. Most of these have on YouTube. You know I'm gonna say football. Mm-hmm. Kevin Austin. Kevin, he's going to give you the whole two. world, East Coast, West Coast, South. Oh, yeah. They know them two guys. They do. You feel me? So that's why I say my city. They do. Okay. Hey, I ain't going to – you got you to shout out your city. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> appreciate you for coming on the interview today, bro. Anything you want to say to your fans and supporters out there? I appreciate you, bro. And um, yeah. looking forward to see everybody come out to um, Towson University watch me play. Play them Saturdays, bro. Put on yeah. for the city. Let's do it. Go Tigers.